Hello viewers, welcome to Ultimate Gaming Guide. Welcome to another computer upgrade tutorial. This time it's going to be Dell Vostro 260 MT. MT stands for mid tower. So these are the computers that you can upgrade. Uh, mid tower cases have a lot of space uh, where you can put like GPUs and upgrade power supplies. Normally the small form factor computers are difficult to upgrade, but these MT computers are easier to upgrade. So let's get into more details why uh, this is a good computer to upgrade to. Uh, this is it's a cheap computer, but it's pretty good because it's based on Sandy Bird chip. When Intel developed their Sandy Bird chip, they made it like a giant leap forward. And uh, afterwards, they just kind of like improve upon the existing design. But uh, Sandy Bridge upgrade was like a major upgrade. So and it's still pretty strong. If you get like a Sandy Bridge Core i7 chip, it's still pretty strong even for by today's standard. And another thing, this computer supports Windows 11, but as of right now, I would not suggest to install Windows 11 on it. What I suppose used to do, I used to like uh, install Windows 10 on it and then uh, upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11, but the method is no longer working. So if you want to like install Windows 11 on it, what do you have to do? You have to Windows 11 on another computer and bring that SSD in here. But uh, you can always install Windows 10 directly because Windows 10 still supports some legacy installation, uh, but uh, Windows 11 only works on UEFI mode. So I would suggest you to go for Windows 10 if you are planning to use this computer to upgrade. And, another, uh, and this computer supports NVIDIA 9 series and 10 series GPUs, which are still pretty good. If you get, get, a, like a, get your hands on in one of the 1080 Ti, they're pretty good even by today's standard. And another reason to upgrade because of the, this computer does not have any kind of proprietary type of connector. These are just standard 24 pin ATX, uh, so it's very easy uh, to replace the power supply and get a like a 80 plus certified one. And uh, the front panel connector are, are also very easy to get into. I will show you the diagram, how it works. So for instance, as you can see the front panel diagram, the Dell, see on the bottom left corner, you see that this is the front panel connector for the Dell uh, Vostro 260. So what are you going to do in your uh, power switch? You're going to connect these two and your HDD LED is going to be up here and your power LED is going to be up here. There is no reset switch and you don't really need it. If you need to turn a restart, just like go to your computer and like do the uh, restart with your mouse, like select the power uh, windows icon and just, you know, just click power and then restart. So it's not a big deal, uh, missing the reset switch. And another reason, these Vostro computers, uh, you can always, if you have a, like a good budget, and if you, ha if you have a, like a case laying around, you can always move this computer to an, another fancy RGB case. Uh, and uh, it will look much better, and um, uh, it, it will get like plenty of airflow because this office computer, they were not, made for gaming so the airflow is not very good but if you can move into a, like a nicer newer standard size case uh, with, with plenty of fans so that would be great for airflow but this computer only have I believe two fan connectors uh, two three pin fan connectors so if you want to install more fans you have to get a fan that has these type of Molex connector uh, then you can use your power supply to power up those fans. Okay, so enough about the reason to upgrade. So let's just upgrade these computers. First things first, you have to upgrade the SSD. So you cannot use any kind of NVMe storage in here. So all you got to do, you can do this uh, 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Get one according to your need and get a name brand one like a Kingston, Samsung or uh, a data. Uh, Western Digital, these are pretty good brands. So get one according to your need, what's your budget. And uh, these computer originally come with Windows 7, which is no good anymore. So what do you have to do? You have to go to 
uh, Microsoft website and download the Windows 10 ISO from there. Afterwards, you just need to have a USB flash drive and you need to download the Rufus software. And all you do is just uh, install or uh, play, turn on the Rufus software and it will give you an option. Hey, where is the ISO is? So you just select the ISO and then just you can create Windows 10 installation media using the using either the BIOS legacy mode or or the UFI mode. You do want to select the BIOS legacy mode because this computer runs on BIOS legacy. So so I and I would suggest be, uh, Windows 10 it is a safer choice but Windows 11 works but you cannot install it directly. It's a it's a discussion for another day for as of now just to install Windows 10 to be safe. And you can get Windows 10 uh, keys from uh, various websites, CJS CD keys. They, they work very good. I, I bought from them plenty of times and I never had an issue. So I would suggest them. And, and another um, alternative you, website that you can use is G2A. They also sell Windows 10 CD keys. That's a lot cheaper than buying it from Microsoft. Okay. And now for the power supply upgrade, power supply upgrade is as a must if you want to put a good GPU in there. And back in the days, those 9 series and 10 series GPU would require like at least 450 or 400 to 500 watt power supply. So uh, just get one according to your need. Uh, uh, get one that is useful to you. Uh, but whatever power supply you get, make sure it has a 4 pin CPU connector and an 8-pin uh, PCIe connector. So 4-pin for your CPU and 8-pin for your GPU. So, uh, But some of the GPUs have like a 1-8-pin, 1-6-pin, or 2-6-pin variation. So make sure whatever GPU you use or you choose, make sure your um, uh, power supply has those connectors. And in case if you the power supply you have it does not have the connector that you required you can always buy adapters by like a, a SATA to 6 pin PCI connector or SATA to 8 pin PCI connector just uh, search them on eBay or Google you will find them and whatever power supply you get make sure it is 80, 80 plus certified and make sure it, is a, it has a bottom mount and bottom mm, a bottom fan uh, because what will happen uh, in this computer if you look at it uh, the power supply is actually on the top like this here power supply is all over, all the way up the top so what will happen and uh, uh, all the heat from the CPU the power supply will suck all the heat from the CPU and blow it out through the back and that way you will have like a lot better uh, airflow and uh, your uh, components will stay cool in a better temperature and as for the CPU upgrade I would suggest getting going for the Core i7-2600, but recently I have found another cheaper alternative. This is the Xeon E3-1270. This is basically a Core i7, but it's lost cheaper. And the only difference between these two CPUs is like uh, Xeon E3-1270 don't have iGPU. Don't have any built-in GPU. That's the... Uh, that's what I mean. Uh, but you are putting a dedicated graphics card in there anyway. So you actually don't need any iGPU. So if you find the Core i7-2600 to be a little bit expensive, you can go for the Xeon E3-1270. And as for the GPU upgrade, uh, this is a Asus Strix 970. Uh, this works pretty good. 970 is still going pretty strong. Even in 2024, you can run... Uh, games like Microsoft Simulator, um, and then you can run games like uh, Last of Us Part 2. Even those games would run uh, in this GTX 970. You have to tweak the settings, but it still runs, which is amazing. But if you can, uh, go for a 1080 Ti. If you're especially if you uh, have the budget for a new case uh, with the plenty of fans and airflow, go for a 1080 Ti. Otherwise, you can also try 1070 or 1070 Ti so those would be very good option for this computer and as for the if you're keeping your existing case uh, 
if you don't have the budget for a new case you can do this there is a just look at the picture on this there is there is a whole bunch of rivets at the bottom of these computer so there is a hard drive bay blocking all your uh, see as you can see in this picture there is a hard drive bay right here if you can see my mouse pointer there is a hard drive bay, uh, blocking um, so you cannot put a bigger GPU unless you take off this hard drive bay so to to take off this hard drive bay what do you have to do you see all these three holes right here you drill three holes um, and the rivets will be loose and you can push out those hard drive bay and uh, make it look like this then you have enough space to put a bigger GPU in there but the bigger GPU will generate a lot of heat so in order to counter that you see that black sticker right here so you can drill a whole bunch of holes like this this is the final product all the way to the right on the on the bottom corner right right bottom uh, you can see this is this, you want to drill three holes through along the line and you want to drill a whole bunch of holes here so that way the heat from the GPU will be able to escape and that's kind of the final picture here uh, as you can see that's my Strix GPU uh, the heat from the fans will be able to get out through those holes and this is my uh, OCZ technology for 500 watt power supply and you see there's a bottom fan so these fan this fan will like suck out all the heat and blow it out through the back so it's it'll be able to move air much better okay and as for the aftermarket case, I also tried this Dell Vostro computer uh, with an aftermarket case as you can see this one also worked this aftermarket case has one two three four five fans and this was like a bottom mounted power supply so this works a lot better for me but as you can see you have a you have the chance to put an even bigger GPU like for instance a 1080 Ti uh, any 10 series or 9 series GPU will work so if you can get your hands on a 1080 Ti and you have the budget for a new case go for it uh, and as for the performance so when I was do I did that upgrade I was using a GTX 970 that Asus Strix that I showed in the picture and you can see uh, I got a graphics score of 3538 and the CPU with the Core, um, Core i7 2600 I got a, gra a CPU score of 3004 so as you can see they're very nicely balanced so this is a very good combo uh, and a very good combo in a budget and as for the Nova Bench, that's another benchmarking software that I use. I got a score of uh, combined score of 10, uh, 1052 with a CPU score of 582, GPU score of 200, memory score of 233, but the storage score is only 37. Maybe you can do a little bit better here if you put a, like a better um, SSD in there. I just used uh, like a uh, older used uh, SSD that I had I had laying around so whenever you want to buy storage uh, don't go for the used one try to get a like a newer one if you can and this is my expense summary as you can see I got the Dell Vostra 260 MT tower for $40 and the 500 watt power supply I actually got it from a uh, $10 from Facebook marketplace, but you can expect to spend only $20 in here and GTX 970 that's $40 um, wherever you buy it from and the Xeon E3 1270 CPU I actually got it for $15, but the $20 you can expect to spend and as for the RAM upgrade, you can just go to eBay and get some DDR3 RAM for cheap. As you can see right here, you can get a grab a DDR3 RAM for $2.54 each. So very good deal. And uh, these RAMs are uh, going for uh, at like running at 1866 megahertz each. So you can get one of these RAMs. Uh, this works pretty good. Uh, so whatever you get, get with this timing, like 11 something that starts with 11 11 11 11 12 11 13 these rams works pretty good so my total expense is 136 dollar 
Uh, that's a very good computer for $136. So my that's my final verdict uh, for Dell Voster 260. I like these computers because they are very easy to work with. And it could be a badass gaming PC if you can manage a 1080 Ti. Uh, but for 1080 Ti, you need to upgrade your uh, power supply a little bit more. Uh, 400 watt or 500 watt power supply won't work. You need to get at least 600 or 650 watt if you want to put like 1080 Ti. And 1080 Ti needs a two 8-pin PCIe connector. And you only want to do that if you have like aftermarket case. So I put a lot of information out there. So if you need, if you have any question, put uh, put a comment in the comment section, and I will try my best to answer those questions. Thank you so much for watching.